it's me. We are in my kitchen, obviously, and I don't think I have filmed a video in here yet, much less really shown you my kitchen, but that's where we're at because this is one of the first cooking videos I've done in a really long time on my channel, and I just thought that this would be the more appropriate place to film. So I have put together three recipes that I made this past week for you all, and just basically did a sped up video showing you what I cooked, how I cooked it, what I used, all that fun stuff. And I've got my computer in front of me, if that's where you see me looking. I'm actually just gonna do a live talk through or a live talk over, kind of like we're watching this together. I just thought it would be funner than doing a sterile voiceover. Uh, and that way, you know, we can just, um, it, it's just a little bit more on the fly, I guess I should say. So if I mess up, then there's honestly no going back. But I have three recipes. If you guys like these videos, I did pre-film another one like this that I will upload next month, but you have to let me know if you want me to keep doing these because they are, they're just, they're a bit tedious, I will say that. Uh, I feel like I've been working on this video for a month, but it's been like a solid week. So just let me know your thoughts and let's just go ahead and start. So for the first recipe that I have on here, uh, I made oven roasted chicken thighs one night with mashed potatoes and broccoli. So oven roasted chicken thighs, this is definitely one of my favorites to do. But before we start on the chicken, I'm gonna go ahead and start boiling up the potatoes because you know, they take quite a long time to cook. So. Big misconception with oven roasted or just roasted in general is that you just put it in the pan and throw it in the oven. Me personally, I almost always sear my meat before I do anything. If I'm using a crock pot, if it's going in the oven, I sear it first. So to do that, I take an oven safe pan and I melt some butter. And what we're gonna do is infuse this butter with some yummy goodness. So I'm throwing in some whole garlic clove. And then I'm also going to throw in a little sprig of rosemary. And this is just going to infuse the butter, give it some flavor. And the chicken is just gonna be so much more amazing than what it would be if you just seasoned it and threw it in the oven. If you are worried about the fat content with the butter, you could use olive oil or some non-stick spray. I'm not really sure how the non-stick spray would work though uh, with the infusing. It probably wouldn't infuse the flavor as much, but just go with the butter. Butter's always the best choice anyways. So to season the thighs, I'll have this seasoning mixture that I put together down below. I'm just putting that on the tops and then we're gonna go ahead and throw them in the pan. Make sure the butter has browned up a bit. You can see the uh, butter is browning and all the flavors are infusing. Again, you won't regret it. It makes it taste so much better. And then I'm just throwing the remainder seasoning mix on top. I'm not really the best at timing things or measurements you'll probably come to find. So I would say I just seared these for a good three to four minutes, just until you have some browning on each side of the uh, chicken thigh. So I go ahead and preheat the oven for 400. That's what I like to cook the chicken on. But before I put the chicken in, I like to make this little cream sauce. So I'm gonna pour a bit of heavy whipping cream in with the chicken, probably about a third of a cup to start out with. And then I like to sprinkle a bit of Parmesan over the top. And this is just gonna create the best sauce ever. You can do this with any seasoning too. I like to do this with lemon pepper chicken like use lemon pepper seasoning and then put some lemons in anyways off track I'm gonna finish up the mashed potatoes while uh, the chickens cooking so salt pepper garlic powder butter and milk nothing cray cray here we're just doing some basic mashed potatoes I wanted all the flavor to really come from the chicken. So about halfway cooking, I take the chicken out and I like to add a leafy green. So I like to use spinach most of the time. You can use kale, really whatever you have in your uh, refrigerator. And then I add a bit more heavy whipping cream so we have some sauce left over and same thing, sprinkle a bit more Parmesan. Back in the oven to finish up cooking and then it should look something like this when it comes out of the oven. It's delicious. I absolutely love doing the cream sauce. Like I said, you can do different variations of it. Just top it with the mashed potatoes and some steamed broccoli and that's all there is to it, baby. Really easy, flavorful meal. Anybody can do it. 
Okay, second meal, really fun one. This is uh, Philly cheesesteak sandwiches with some sweet potato fries and Yukon gold fries. Now, Philly people do not come for me. You have to realize I live in Tennessee and I have to basically use what I can get here. So I know Philadelphians are very particular in their uh, Phillies, but you know, this is like Tennessee girl version. So uh, before we start the Philly, I'm going to start out with the potato wedges or the fries. I have sweet potatoes and Yukon gold or yellow potatoes. Use whatever potatoes you have. If you have red, if you have russet, that's fine. It doesn't have to be anything uh, particular like this. So I'm going to pour some olive oil over the fries. Put some seasoning mixture in. I'll have the seasoning mix down below. And then I like to use ranch on these bad boys. I love ranch seasoning. It is like top tier for me. I use it on everything. And I had some leftover rosemary left, so I threw in some rosemary sprigs. Mixed everything up with my hands. Just make sure all of the fries are coated and that there's no powder hanging around. And then you're just gonna throw them on a pan and uh, you know, make sure that they're all evenly distributed. Throw them in the oven and just bake them on 400, 425 uh, while you finish up the fillies. So I don't really love peppers on my filly, so I just did onions, but if you like peppers, go ahead and slice up some peppers. I'm just slicing up onions and then on my flat griddle top, I have a bit of oil and I'm just gonna let those onions saute up while I work on the meat. So the meat, in my opinion, my favorite meat to use for a filly is a thin cut ribeye. I was a dumb dumb and went to Walmart instead of my Publix and they did not have thin cut ribeye. So I had to get some other, I don't know, bottom cut. I don't even know what this was to be honest but any thin cut steak should work. But I'm just telling you, if you can get thin cut ribeye, it is the best, in my opinion, for uh, the Philly cheesesteak. So I'm just slicing these up. Sometimes you can get the meat pre-sliced too, but I don't know, I always question, I always question those. So slice it up nice and thin, and then you're gonna take it over to the griddle, or if you just have a pan, whatever you have, just work with it. I've seasoned it with Tone Six Pepper Seasoning. That's a pretty spicy seasoning, so if you don't like spice, use salt, pepper, onion powder, whatever you prefer. I also like to put some butter over the top, and then when it's cooked about halfway through, I start mixing in the onions. I mean, just look at this. This is like a glorious picture right here. I love making these. They're kind of like a treat for us. So after your meat and onions have cooked, and also peppers, if you decide to do peppers, you're going to take a sub roll and just stuff it. Stuff that bad boy with your steak and onions, and then you can top it with cheese whiz, you can top it with provolone, Swiss, I use pepper jack, because that's just what I had. Broil it for a minute or two, and then that's it. You're done. Philly, some nice, nice fries. It's delish. All right, so this is one that you all have been asking for quite a bit, and it is my chicken pot pie recipe. So without further ado, this is how I whip the bad boy up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say I make the crust from homemade sometimes, and then sometimes I just buy it from the store. It's whatever you wanna do. I will say it saves you a lot of time if you use the store-bought. If you wanna make it from scratch, I will have the recipe down below. Uh, so to start out with, we're gonna start cutting up a chicken breast or two, depending on how full you want your chicken pot pie. I stuff mine to the brim. So I'm using two big chicken breasts for this recipe. And then I'm gonna start filling up a nice uh, saucepan with a bit of water and chicken bouillon. Now, it'd be easier if I just had chicken broth, but I was actually out, so this is what I do when I'm out of chicken broth. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the chicken with the broth mixture, and then season the chicken up. So some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Uh, again, I throw a little bit of ranch seasoning there. I'm telling you people, I use this on like everything. Uh, but just use whatever seasonings you have, honestly, whatever. Uh, you like to use in general. It doesn't have to be anything 
in particular. Uh, next, I'm gonna start on the potatoes. So I am cutting up a few, again, Yukon Golds. I like Yukon Golds because they're softer and they cook faster. And I act, you can use frozen because I do use a few frozen options in this video, but um, for the potatoes, I normally like to go for fresh. So I'm just chopping those up and then I like to do a pre-boil because the length of time that they cook in the oven does, doesn't really give the potatoes long enough to cook. So I do a, a quick pre-boil before we start baking the pot pie. So now I'm just taking the chicken out of the broth mixture and I'm reserving the broth, as you can see, in a measuring cup. And what we're gonna do now is make kind of like a roux or a gravy, however you wanna call it. I'm sauteing up a bit of onion and garlic and then I'm throwing in some butter. So you're gonna let the butter melt and then you're going to take about a tablespoon and a half of flour and what this is going to do is create a thickening mixture or a roux uh, more commonly known as a roux i guess we would say and you're just going to whisk that together make sure the flour has cooked and browned up and then after it has browned you're going to start adding in your broth and you can see the broth is going to start thickening up really quick and it's basically creating a gravy and this is so your chicken pot pie isn't runny uh, and watery. It's just gonna thicken it and make a nice chicken pot pie sauce that you're used to. So I'm gonna finish using up that broth and then I actually like to use heavy whipping cream. It makes a creamy texture. If you are trying to skip out on dairy, you don't have to use the whipping cream uh, or you could use a milk alternative. It's just up to you, honestly. This is just how I do it. Um, I'm adding a bit more seasoning mix, and then once it has bubbled and thickened, I'm gonna start adding all the ingredients. So I'm gonna add my chicken, some frozen corn, and then some frozen peas and carrots, and then go in the potatoes. So that's what I like to put in mine. A lot of people like to do other vegetables, like uh, green beans. I've seen some people do asparagus. Whatever you have, the, the point of a chicken pot pie is that the vegetables, uh, they can they can differ just use whatever you have this is my normal recipe though so mixing everything together and I'm just gonna let that sit I'm actually gonna turn the heat off and let that sit and then let the uh, under layer pie crust bake up so you want to make sure that you bake your bottom layer crust first if you don't then it's gonna be soggy and it's not gonna be the best in the world so just gonna let that bake for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna go in and uh, put the mixture in. Now I told you I like to fill the bad boys up. I don't know how many times I've said uh, bad boys in this video, but apparently everything I make is a bad boy. I uh, did to top the crust off obviously and poke a couple holes in it so nothing bubbles over. Just to be on the safe side, I actually like to put mine on a uh, baking pan that way I don't get anything in the oven and you don't have a mess to clean up and you're just gonna bake that for about 20 more minutes until the crust is golden brown and you're gonna have um, golden brown pot pie goodness if this this pot pie pan by the way is from pioneer woman 10 out of 10 would recommend because it gives you a pretty crust without even trying uh, so that's the pot pie recipe and those are the three meals that uh, I made this past week. So I hope you enjoyed the video and the live talk through. That was actually kind of fun. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it and definitely let me know if you all want to see more of these cooking videos. I hope you enjoyed. I will have all of the ingredients, all the recipes listed down below. I may actually put them on my blog. That way they might be a little bit more accessible and easier to read. Either way, they will be listed for you guys to refer back to. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the cooking style videos. Definitely let me know if you want to see more and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.